Persona 6 is right around the corner. And while we don't have much of anything confirmed to go by content wise to give us an idea of what distinguishes Persona 6 from the previous games, there are three big pieces of insider information that seem to really guide this game's narrative for now. We're talking a semi-open world Persona game, two playable protagonists, and a change to the social link system that would make these interactions feel more fluid. Persona has always been iterating over each previous game as Atlas seeks to provide bigger and better experiences for the nearly 30-year-old franchise. And it looks like Persona 6, if this insider information were to pan out, will continue that trend. Before we begin diving into these three components, let me just remind you that this is all just speculation at this point, and we really have no way of knowing if this information will reflect the final game. So take all this with heaping grains of salt. This salt is literally the entire video, but if you're cool with entertaining some big leaks that may hint at these massive changes that could be introduced in Persona 6, this is the cozy little video you're not gonna wanna leave. That said, let's take a deeper look into how these three components could come together to create the ultimate Persona game in Persona 6. Real quick, if you're into Atlas RPGs and want a chance to play these games at launch, paid for by yours truly, consider entering into my giveaways of both Metaphor Refantasio and Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. The giveaways are open to everyone, and if you'd like more information, the giveaways are linked in the description. Good luck! Let's first talk revamped social links and confidants. This supposed leak suggests that these iconic social moments spent with friends and acquaintances will be more fluid this time around, giving us more opportunities to interact with these individuals, potentially allowing us to engage in activities while also not taking much time out of the schedule. Again, grains of salt people, but if this turns out to be true, this is a huge W in my book. I love the social links as we currently have them. They provide great character development with each game's excellent cast, but they are very static. It would be nice to have more interactivity with these characters instead of just selecting certain options to raise affinity with them. Going out bowling, catching fish, playing card games, or heck. Since numerous information points at Persona 6 sticking to the high school setting, it would be cool to actually participate in club activities, like having rhythm mini games take place in band practice, or maybe attempting threes while playing basketball. These activities wouldn't necessarily contribute to your affinity bonuses with these social links, but could perhaps net you other bonuses like Persona stat boosts, extra combat abilities, and the like. Like, just imagine for a second, being able to eliminate shadows with a freaking saxophone due to achieving a high rank in band club. Yeah, this borders more on side activities, but this is also my point as well, and that it would be nice to be able to merge a world that contains more side activities with dates or hangouts with social links. Definitely let me know your thoughts on that. And the other thing I want to bring up regarding social links is that it would be great to see these social links actually have effects on the main story. It doesn't have to be major here, but let's say you're in a relationship with another character and the rest of your team behaves and acknowledges the existence of that relationship in the story. That's just an example, but it would sure be nice to see the social link system evolve into something like that in Persona 6. Even if this stuff doesn't get accommodated in Persona 6, if the insider info turns out to be true with an increase in fluidity with more interactivity, that is a huge win in my book and marks a sound evolution over the excellent system we already know and love. All right, the other big bit that distinguishes Persona 6 from the others is the two protagonists setup. Now, I know what you're saying. Yes, there are two protagonists in Persona 3 Portable, but what I'm getting from this insider info for Persona 6 is that the player would play as both these characters across one playthrough, rather than having to commit to one throughout an entire playthrough like Makoto and Kotone in Persona 3 Portable. That's just my interpretation of the info, but considering that's how things are gonna be, hypothetically, Head on the Block mentions that black and white is the theme of the game, with K and S being the first letters of their names. As many have pointed out, K could be Kuro, which is black in Japanese, and S could be Shido, which is white, so this game could have some sort of yin-yang approach to it, as the leaker alludes that both day and night are important to this theme. As we discussed earlier regarding social links, having two protagonists definitely provides more avenues as to how these mechanics can play out, as maybe certain relationships may only be forged by using a specific character. This goes well beyond the social links and extends to activities in battle mechanics as well, as having dual protagonists will likely add so many more variables to the typical Persona formula that can contribute greatly to the variety of gameplay on offer. 
I know there is a lot of speculation that perhaps players will rotate between the two protagonists depending on the time of day, and this mechanic of sorts definitely has implications on the rest of the game's systems like social links and perhaps some new activities to engage with. The two protagonists, likely reflecting opposites like day and night, perhaps boy and girl, gives more importance to the many systems at play in Persona, giving players two distinct scenarios in which certain social links, activities, and perhaps lands to traverse become possible with the dual protagonist approach. Not only would this greatly add variety to the game, but it could especially highlight an aspect of Persona games that some would argue still remains underutilized that being nighttime activities. These are all just my thoughts, considering if any of this actually becomes true, but let me know how the next Persona game can benefit by utilizing a dual protagonist system and how it could enhance the various areas of Persona. Persona and the semi-open world game structure isn't something that flows smoothly off the tongue. Persona has always grounded us in small slices of cities and towns across Japan, introducing just enough areas for us to feel deeply connected to them after spending almost an entire calendar year of game time immersed in these environments. We see these areas come to life with different NPCs inhabiting these spaces. We see these areas transform through the passing of each season, and it's these smaller, confined spaces that makes the areas of these games feel so cozy. In Persona 3, we had the small, cozy stations and malls to explore in Iwatodai. In Persona 4, we had the bucolic, small-town streets to roam that provided more length and scope to the areas in Inaba. In Persona 5, we were introduced to the labyrinthine web of streets and corridors of a bustling megacity in Tokyo without it feeling too grand. And if these leaks for the next game turn out to be true, then Persona 6 will see the series greatly expand its scope into a semi-open world format. Persona is about to get much, much bigger. There have been several semi-open world games over the years that have garnered much praise, with games like the recent Tomb Raider series, the Star Wars Jedi franchise, the Norse God of War games, and the most recent example, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, proving to be effective semi-open world games that significantly expanded in scope these franchises that were historically known to be a bit smaller and often more linear. Part of the appeal for Persona is that intimate experience we get with these towns and cities across a calendar year worry that some fans are justifiably having is that this may get lost when the game world suddenly becomes much more expansive. Those same streets and shop owners we used to frequent every day after school, that beef bowl challenge at Aya, well, they might be replaced with multiple cookie cutter lookalikes throughout a greatly expanded world. I definitely understand that concern, because I too share that, but if done right here, Atlas can create a world that feels more alive and connected than anything we've ever seen in the franchise. Here is how I think they can do it. Semi-open world doesn't necessarily mean that the map has to be massive. Focusing on a slightly larger hub area than what we've grown accustomed to will be nice to give greater variety to an increased variety of activities we are likely to be able to participate in, as we discussed with the social links. Perhaps one central city or location, similar in size to something like the hub of Fire Emblem Three Houses or Kamurocho in the Yakuza series, could work really well, with almost everything that you would need present in largely one location. On the flip side, perhaps two locations like this could exist, provided Atlas goes down the dual protagonist route, where each protagonist would largely reside around their own hub area, both separated by an expanse of regions, where the story would ultimately take us on a journey where later in the narrative, these two protagonists would meet. It's also a possibility that these protagonists may or may not already know each other and that they share the same hub, but yeah, there are numerous possibilities here. The dual protagonist system here in Persona 6 could further allow players to experience different parts and regions of the world depending on who the player is currently controlling, similar to how certain activities and social links may only be able to be explored by a specific protagonist. Like I have been alluding to, the sky is the limit with this, as having two protagonists representing the opposites with the black and white theme, along with a semi-open world structure, lends itself to many possibilities. Considering Head on the Block also states that there appears to be DLC that lets players quote, fly, and that Atlas has a continued interest in expanding the game further with more story and DLC drops over a two to three year period, the semi-open world structure is a solid model that allows the developers to continue adding to the game world organically. 
Honestly, I could go on and on about this, as Persona 6, if these rumors turn out true, sounds unbelievably ambitious, but holy crap, good people, I'm freaking stoked. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments regarding a potential semi-open world setting in Persona 6. While all of that I went through may sound really great or really bad to you, just know that these are just some thoughts about where this series may be taking us with Persona 6, based solely off these key leaks we've heard. None of this has been confirmed, so treat this video as complete speculation, and if you'd like to add to what I've theorized here, I'd love to hear all about it in the comments. We are truly lucky to have Persona be as big as it currently is, with Atlas dedicated to keep the series alive and well with the remakes and remasters of older games. Games, along with the frequent releases of spin-offs, and with Persona 6 right around the corner, Persona has never been in better shape. Go ahead and watch this video if you're interested in seeing all the currently confirmed and leaked Persona projects Atlas is working on, and I look forward to seeing you all real soon in the next one.